welcome to the show. Welcome Yay. to the show. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you counted ten. Come inside, come inside. Uh, okay. Carnival number nine? Uh, no, sir. You remember. This is Dr. Pepper commercial. We listened to it last week. You, you connected? You remember. You remember. Uh, remember. You remember. 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 Alright, so, welcome to Monday and the Facebook Live show, everyone. Boom, We're going to start boom, with boom. a little bit of news. Yeah, pop, pop, pop. yeah we got to get that button. We're going to start with a little bit of news, uh, as always. Hi, you guys friend. chime in. Tell us where you're California. from. Say hello. We're just going to say hello now, just to make life easy on all of you. Mm -hmm. You can always chime in and say hello for me. Yes, okay, sir. so we found out from Alpine this Hi, week Corey. Yep. that the new Alpine radios that were Giancarlo. coming, hey. Alpine, or CarPlay, hands-free, no wires, Pinocchio style. Clint, got my shirt today. Thank you, man. I appreciate it for the support. Clint, Clint, Clint yeah. got his shirt today. Awesome. Cool, Clint. Uh, put Thomas. up a post, put up a picture on mm. Instagram and tag us in it. Yeah. Love to see, Facebook. put some faces with names. Yeah. Um, happy birthday! Oh, happy birthday to me! John. Thank you, Omaha. Love your steaks. Um, what's up from rainy Tampa? Hey, Ooh. yeah, all day, baby. Right here. So sad, so sad. That's awesome. Um, Mark, Jeff, Jeff, Arizona checking in at 109 Ooh. today. Was not but that it's a dry today. heat. It's a dry heat, though, right? Yeah. It's a dry heat. That's what they always say. Yeah. I remember getting off a plane in Arizona. We were, we were flying in from Maui, getting off the plane. It's like yeah. five o'clock in the morning, and that tube from the from the airplane to the airport. See, Fran. Hello. Oh my God! It was like a microwave oven. It was so hot. I was like, it's five o'clock in the morning. I'm dying here. Puerto Rico. Giancarlo, yeah. Georgia. Tim, Gregory. the tool man. What's up, buddy? Um, all right, so Alpine let us know this week that the new CarPlay radio, Android Auto radios, are not going to be out until October at the minimum. Hey, Wayne. Try like an oven, yes. So, for all you guys looking forward to the new Alpine radios, not anytime soon. So that kind of sucks. Hola, Gabriel, ¿cómo estás? Um, did you guys check out the Facebook? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Jeez. Uh, we're on Facebook. Saludos, live. Ismael. Yeah. What's oh Monterey? Yeah, Monterey. Monterey, Monterey Mexico. Woo! Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, ¿Qué tal, Luis? Did you guys check out the vlog? Uh, the vlog went up last night. We're I think we're gonna try to keep it at seven o'clock Sunday night. Seems to be a good time for me, uh, getting it all edited and up. Um, it came in at thirty-eight minutes this week. That was a really long. Luis, say happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Luis. Um. Okay. Just so you don't. Okay. Forty-five. So you, in case you want Gabriel, West Palm Beach. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so the show came in at 38 minutes. Yeah. Uh, we're kind of worried that that might be a little too long. I know you, a lot of guys watched it. Or I don't know how much. I don't know what. The, I haven't looked at the minute rate yet to see when you guys dipped. Yeah. Uh, it seems like you guys are doing really well with it. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean. Um, we're thinking about cutting it at, at least. Uh, Tim. I was just watching the vlog. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> we're thinking about cutting it to twice a week. Yes. We're, we're toying with the idea of doing, like, Wednesday, so Monday to Wednesday, and then mm -hmm. Thursday to Sunday. Thank you, Cece. Yeah. Um, and cutting it, doing two vlogs a week, at least for the summer, maybe. Thank you, Wayne. Until we get, um, vlogs are awesome, love them to be, I uh, love them to be longer. Young amigo. Well, see, that's why we're thinking if we go to two a week... Because yeah. we cut out a ton of footage to keep it at 38 minutes. I could have easily done an hour, but I, I didn't want to put a bunch of silliness in there. So yeah. uh, we, we, we trimmed it down. I wanted to keep it at a half hour. I couldn't because we added Saturday. Um, so that's why we're thinking maybe going to twice, going twice a week. So we're toying with that idea. Let us know what you guys think of twice a week. Maybe doing a half hour, full hour show twice. You know, the end of the day is going to be the same. You know, just It'll be the same amount, but video. we can... We can add more into it that yeah. we, we tend to cut 45 years on. It feels pretty old. Um, <laughs> I know it's not, but it's, <laughs> you know, lots of aches and pains. Um, so that's a thought. Let us know what you guys think about the vlog. Should we go to two days a week? Allow us to have a little bit longer show. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. This is kind of weird. Um, so I'm going to cut that out. Happen? Now, on a serious note, before we get to answering your guys' questions, so start getting ready to throw those into the queue. 
and it's about questions. You guys, uh, we love answering questions. We get a ton of questions every week, both on YouTube and on Facebook. We mm -hmm. try to answer them in a timely manner. Uh, we get a ton of them now, so it's not like when we first started. We get maybe 10 a day. Uh, we can get 100 questions in a day easy, mm -hmm. and we, we try to respond to all of them. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Some questions are just like, I, I don't even know how to answer that. Um, but we try to answer them. The problem, I wouldn't say is a problem, is that twice a week sounds better than once a week. Yeah, I know, that's what we were thinking, you know, the more of us, yay. Yes. Um, I'm joking, that's very... Anyways, so the problem we have is that please be patient with us when it comes to your questions. We want to get that information or get back with you as quick as possible. It's just sometimes it's hard because outside of here we also have a life, not much of one, but, uh, you know, we try to spend time with our family. We spend a lot of time doing this as well as everything out there. Do you install iPads? No. No. No, we don't. Mm. Well, the kind of thing that was like, we don't have those kind of cars in here, like out of state. What do you mean? You know, Where's like out of country. Pad? Yes. Like, oh, oh, okay. So, like, for example, what he's talking hard. about is he, uh, a, a customer from out of, out of country out was of asking country, about a yes. car that we don't have here in the States, and it was going to take us some time because we'd have to call the manufacturer of the parts and find out if they know anything about it. So it's Sunday, it's not, and then he gets, he got upset because we couldn't get back to him in a timely manner. It's like, we're going to get back to you, you just got to give us just more give than time. four hours just or eight some hours. Time. Sometimes yeah. it takes two days. Um, I mean, we always try Probably to get more. back. You know, but like, it, yeah, so, yeah, so try, moral of the story is try to be patient with us when it comes to asking any questions. We want to answer everyone's questions. Sometimes it's hard. And I forgot to hit record. Hey. Well, that sucks. That's, right. that's okay. Well, so the first half of the show is going to look crappy because we will have to rip it off of Facebook. Well, just to capture everything. Dean's birthday. So everybody hey, say happy birthday. Happy 35th. Uh, yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Butch. Um, all right, so. Uh, all right, what does that say? PM in the UK. Hey, Tony. Rain, we still have the screen, <laughs> but still happy. <laughs> All right, so let's scroll back and see. I think there was a couple questions okay, that popped up. Okay, uh, well, just two, two questions. Okay, good. Two's good. So what would you use to cut a hole in the door, like in the door panels? Yes. For a super tweeter bullets. I can find any video on YouTube. Um, Mainly because cutting holes in the doors is not anything a lot of people like to do. But it's not to say it's not impossible to do. If you have to drill a hole for a tweeter in a door, the easiest thing to do is use some form of a hole saw. Now, let's say you have a two inch hole that you need to make. I suggest getting a hole saw that is maybe a little smaller than it needs to be. So if you have to make a two inch hole, maybe get like a one and three quarter inch hole saw. Uh -huh. Or get exactly the same size. It depends on the hole saw. Like the hole saws I have are dealt, or what are they? They're um, uh, Bosch and they suck and they walk. So I would never use those. So what I do is I cut the hole a little bit smaller and then I use a grinder to grind up the hole to the size that I need. So that's how I do it. You could also build a template, use a router and go crazy that way. But typically it's a hole saw and then a little bit bigger. That's, that's, yeah. I don't know what this is. I'm <laughs> churning ice cream. Make it a movie. Make it a movie. Really? I feel like, what's that game, you know? I think you're, you're eating supposed so to guess. fast. Mm. Anyway. Okay, go ahead. So, Brian say, looking for a good SQ double DIN radio for a 2014 Edge Limited. Um, I want to keep the lighting, the AC, the heat seat. Uh, sorry. What kind of car is it? An Edge? Edge. 2014. Ooh. And with the heat seat controls. It'd probably be a Metro kit if they even make one. Oh, Scotch? No, I don't think it's Metro. Yeah. Check, check MetroOnline.com to see if they even make a kit for that car. Uh, they probably do. You might be able to use a Maestro. It depends on... I, it depends. It's either going to be a Metro kit or it's going to be like a Best kit and uh, Maestro RR. Obviously, can't look it up right now, but uh, check MetroOnline.com. Check bestkits.com, and of course you can go to uh, my, uh, data link maestro dot slash maestro dot com. Um, but as far as a, an awesome sounding double din radio, I'm assuming you want something with video. You're going to either want to go with the sub guys Aloha Big Island in Hawaii. I'm going to be in Maui in July. Just saying, I love Hawaii. Okay. Um, 
sound quality uh, doubled in, you're going to want to look at like the, the best of the manufacturers. So for example, Pioneer NEX radios all sound better than anything else they make. So like if you don't need navigation, the 4200 is going to sound better than the 490, 491, 390, 391. Uh, those are going to be their best sounding radios. Uh, if you're thinking Kenwood, you're going to want Exelon. Exelon. Exelon radios are their better sounding ones. So you look at like the 9903, the 6903, those all have the premium sound packages built into them. So that's what you want to look at as far as double dingoes. Now if you want something that is not a video screen, then there again, look at the X, I would probably go at that point with the Kenwood Exelon CD double din player. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't remember the model number off the top of my head, but whatever the one that is the highest numbered one, it's always which that's going to be the best one. Okay, so let's see, Vladimir, Vladimir say, when nothing is playing in my aftermarket radio, my my subwoofer start starting to make a noise and moving in and out by their own. Ooh. So I would want to know more thoughts? about that. Like what um what kind of radio do you have? I, I I get the aftermarket radio, but what kind of aftermarket radio in it? It sounds like there's something because the amp usually just reacts to whatever it's getting fed. So if there's something wrong with the aftermarket radio's preamp section, that might be what's doing it. You're using the sub output. You could feed that sub any one of the front rear or sub RCAs to see if it's doing it. If none of the other channels are doing it, you may have something wrong with that sub output uh, just to check it. The other thing too is you may need to turn the gain down on the amplifier, but I'd like to know what kind of radio you have. Okay, so... Hello from Sweden. Do you guys do many Pontiac GTOs? My yeah, we've done a ton of GTOs. Actually, one of if you guys saw the the Ford F one fifty Amp Pro video, the two we did, the guy that owns that truck, he's a big GTO guy. So we worked on his GTO, and of course all the other GTO guys that live around here that hung out with him. So yeah, we we we've done a decent amount of GTOs over the year. Haven't done any recently because they're kind of getting fewer and far between. But yeah, we we worked on. Well, I worked on a couple of GTOs. Okay. It's always fun to get that radio out. Steven, say hi from Canada and say happy birthday. Thank you. Ah, uh, of course, Tony, say happy birthday, Dean. Richard from Sweden. Yeah. What's up, buddy? Thank you. Mm, let's see, Mark, say Maestro RR, install video, like if you, we have an install yeah, video. Yeah, um, actually the last, was it the Toyota? The Prius? Yeah, I think so. If you go watch the, uh, the radio replacement Prius video, if memory serves, we did the Maestro RR and we, we put a lot of time into talking about programming the Maestro RR. So check, we didn't just do a RR video because that's, I don't know, it seemed kind of boring. So we kind of combine the two with the two. So go back and look at the Prius install video. If, check, if it's not that one, it's gonna be one of the recent radio install videos we did. Um, we took a lot of time going through the, the steps it takes to do the, the RR. It's really, it's annoying, annoyingly simple. We'll, we'll call it that. All right, so let's see, Supran. Say I saw your video. I saw you install of the front-facing camera. Does the Pioneer 4700 have the option to do it? The 4700 does not have the option to flip the image. You're going to need to have a camera that has the ability to flip the image in camera. So at that point, you're going to want to look at one of the Echo Master small mount cameras or anything that says it's reverse. Uh, it, it can reverse the camera. Most of the time that's denoted by either a button or a wire that you cut. That'll allow you to switch the image. So uh, just look for in the, in the switching. Mm -hmm. So yes, switching. the radio have the option to do that? No, the radio does not have the option to do it. No, I mean to add the front facing camera. 4700, okay. Two things. One, the 4700 does not support front-facing camera option at all. The only way you can do a front-facing camera on a 4700 is through the AV input. Right. And it is not switchable like it is on a 48, or I'm sorry, a 5700, where you can go to camera, choose mm -hmm. it from the menu, and switch between front yeah. and rear. Yeah. You'd have to go to AV, AV. 
and which means you can't have sound playing while you're looking at your front camera. So if you just want it as you're pulling into a parking spot, you go source, AV, your front camera will appear. Um, if you want a more permanent solution to that so you don't have to use your AV, you can use the Pack Audio, what is it, VC41? I always get it wrong, and that is a four camera switcher. Mm -hmm. They actually just came out with a two camera yes. switcher too that I haven't got in. I just read about the other day. We'll get in, and that's gonna yes, he's the that is gonna do one. that. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Just wait, wait on that. We're gonna have a couple videos on that. But anyways, the forty seven hundred won't switch the image. So if you're gonna get a camera, you gotta get one that can switch the image. That's where we're going with that. The new pack piece, I think, is a VC twenty one. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. VCI, I think it's a VCI and a VCI forty one VCI. 21. Sorry, a little scatterbrain on that. They're new products that we haven't been able to play with much yet, just on time. We have them, and it would be cool to talk about. So, All cameras right. are, we're getting to more camera videos. I think that's his name. Uh, Palikana Aki from Hawaii. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, Corey, have you guys What was that one? No. Oops. Yeah, yeah, Aki. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's have from the guys? Big Island? I don't know. Is that what you said? From the big eyes in yeah. Hawaii, yeah. Do you know Corey. any, uh, Aki, do you know, or, or, uh, do you know any places in Maui, any car stereo shops in Maui? I, I'm, I would like to go and see a couple while I'm there. Um, so if you know of any, let me know. Okay, go ahead. Cool. Um, Corey say, have you guys had a chance to install anything in the 2017 Honda Ridgeline? I'm interested to put in a like, CarPlay unit I can find details on the install. Yeah, Hondas, for some reason, Hondas have just kind of like become very difficult and very few and far between. The answer is no. We haven't done anything in a new Ridgeline. We haven't done anything in a lot. The only new Honda we've worked on, I think, is the Civic. And I think at that, all we did was add an amp. So it's becoming a weird car as far as working on. Um, yeah, and there's probably nothing on the car yet. Plus, right. Maestro is kind of dragging their feet on that one as well. All right, so Aki say, uh, will my Alpine M65 will be good enough for my R-Type 12? The, the which one? Alpine M65. Which one is the M65? That's an old. That's an old one? Yeah, that's an old one. I mean, R-Types really do well when you have anywhere between 70 to 120 watts. So if the amp puts out between 70 to 120 watts, the R-Types will do great. If it's not that, maybe bridge it to them. I don't know, but that's really for an R type. You want to see about that amount of power. Okay, so um, Vladimir, about the subwoofers in and out. Yes. Uh, he have the Avic 5000 NEX. Well, that should, oh, that shouldn't do that then. So what kind of <laughs> what kind of amp is it? I don't know. All right, so we know we got a 5000 NEX, so the radio should be fine. Um, you can switch the RCAs to the front or rear and see if the subwoofer stops moving. I would definitely check that. What kind of... Um... Amplifier you have. Yes. Yes, okay, so Tim. Tim say, I have the pack RP5 in the 2011 Silverado. Yeah. And my blinker sound really quiet. Quiet. Yeah. Yeah. But all the other chimes, they are really good volume. Mm. Can I make the blinker sound louder? No, Tim. The chimes? Unfortunately, the, the, the module is the same module for all of them and if you make one louder you make them all louder so yeah there is a volume control on the side of the unit that allows you to turn it up or down but then when you put the key in you get a, a you know that ding 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 sound gets really really loud that is a complaint that we've had before and it's like sorry guys but yeah no okay so Wesley Wesley say I'm getting a Pioneer ABH X 7800 VT, and I will run in an overhead for the kids in the back. Yep. Can I shut this? Can I shut it off the screen, or close it when I play in the movie? Yes. In the back? Yeah. So if you're getting the 78, 6800, you know the motorized flip out, and and you want to put it onto a uh, overhead. I mean, yeah, you can close it so you don't have to watch it. You just have to listen to it because all those radios have is an AV output to feed the overhead. So yeah, if you just want to close it so it's just not staring at you in the face, go right ahead. It'll still play. Hey, Frank from Maryland. Say what's up. What's up? Uh, Richard, happy birthday. Thank you. Um, 
Cole, when you install a bullet tweeter, how do how do I wire them to the amp? You just run into the parallel or door speakers? Uh, you could connect it to the, the door speakers. Just make sure you use the... Oh, directly to the amp, sorry. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's up to you. It's going to have the same effect. Just make sure you use a the, the crossover that the unit came with. I also, if you're going to do bullet tweeters, I recommend getting the 8 ohm versions of the bullet tweeters, not mm -hmm. the 4 ohm versions of the bullet tweeters, uh, because you don't need them to be... They're going to be loud enough, so... Yeah, you should. Yeah, I mean, you can connect them right to the mid range. So if you're going to bullet in the mid range, you can just connect them right there and just make sure there's a crossover attached to the tweeter. All right. So Chris, Chris, say hi guys from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Wow. Woo. I feel important now. That's uh, cool. That's that's pretty cool. Thank yeah. you so much, yeah. man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's not swimming. <laughs> can you use? Can you use the 2011 Camaro factory GPS in a factory microphone when installing the pack audio in the NEX8200? The GPS antenna you might be able to retain using the new... Mm. I honestly uh, don't, I don't know if that new GPS antenna will work on that. Huh. Um, iData came out with the TOY2, which yeah. was a an adapter for those kind of things, but I don't think it works on the Chevy. I'm not sure. Microphone is a no. You can no. You can't use the microphone uh, because it's it's too small. And well, you, you just can't retain the microphone. Um, it's it, you're gonna have to put the Pioneer one. And if it's a convertible. You're gonna you, you you have there's no because the convertible has it in the A pillar which is almost impossible but if it's not it's the um, hard top you can remove the factory microphone and put your microphone in behind it uh, we have a, a video on that it's how to retain your factory microphone location and that's about the closest you're gonna get to that yeah so check out that video but as far as the GPS antenna goes honestly you don't even have to worry about that the GPS doesn't have the antenna just has to go underneath the dash it doesn't have to go on the dash so I mean that's not the big deal there just make a bracket and put it up as high as you can in the dash underneath the plastic so I mean yeah it would be cool to retain it but I don't I don't know if that set uh, yeah I don't know we've we haven't played with enough of the the factory antennas because most people that have the GMs with the GPS mm -hmm. are a little late to the game as far as replacing the radio. Yeah. They still think it's awesome. So. Yep. Yep. All, All right. right. So Jeff, when you do a dyno on the forty two hundred. When are we doing one? Yes. Um. We still have two in the queue to edit. We don't want to overload the channel with them, but yes, the 4200 has been the most requested one, so that will be next. Hey. Uh, you're probably looking maybe a week or two out, though, just because, I, there again, I don't. I'll, I want to do one a week. I don't want to do, like, three a week. So just be we're, patient. we're working on that. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, I can say sorry, no. Only been in Maui Only once. Only been in Maui once. No yes. problem, buddy. Thank you. Um, Victor's Victor say Kenwood DDX 9903S. How to remove the wiring message when the camera is on while you backing up? <laughs> Tap the screen. Hey guys, uh, Anthony. Oh, actually, he replied. He's like, you can remove it, unfortunately. I think you could tap the screen. Yeah. Try tapping the screen while you're backing up. Just tap it and see if that removes it it's annoying as hell and i've i've talked to them about that i'm like dude why is it so big why does it sit so far down it's like the suckiest warning ever um it should be up tight in th but you know hey yeah they go okay yeah man yeah bro <laughs> yeah 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 woo woo uh-huh uh -huh, so, sure probably anthony you can try too man um, yeah, right. just try tapping the screen like in the top center or something like that. Try one of the tap points. Sometimes, mm. if you go to the bottom, that's going to just shut it off. But I think if you tap the screen, Don't it might it. go away. Don't punch the screen. Well, I can't do it on these because no. we, we no, have to. Activate. Have to like, I'll it. check it maybe tomorrow if I can remember to see. That might make for a good video. We'll have to remember that one. All right, How to Corey. Get that to go away. Corey, say, have you guys used the Hertz SPL series? No, we have not used the Hertz SPL series. The SPL stuff for us really isn't all that big. 
Uh, we do carry American Base and the Scar Audio Loud stuff and some of the Earthquake, but the Hertz, we, we most of the people buying that some that stuff from us want, we'll call it cost effective or cost conscious buys. Mm -hmm. So and the Hertz stuff is, we carry the Rockford for the higher end stuff and that usually gets kind of dusty. So everyone's looking f at least for that fifteen dollar tweeter, that twenty five to thirty dollar mid range. So. It really doesn't do all that well for us. All right, so Frank, Frank say uh, I bought the fifteen dollar backup camera from Amazon and lasted for three minutes and died. <laughs> That's mm. good. Well, we have one sitting on the workbench. So we're going to shoot a video on just mm. just more of a hey, more of a helpful because it has all the silly parts that a lot of those things come with. So ah, uh, David, David, hi from Kansas City, Missouri. Keep it on. Hi. Victor, Kenwood DDX9903S. When I press the cam button, the camera does not come on. Do I need to program something? What do you mean the camera doesn't come on? Does it go to a black screen that says something and you have no camera view? That's, That's for Victor. Victor? Yes. Yeah, let me know. If you're hitting the cam button, the screen is going black and you can't actually see the camera, let me know. That because that that's an install problem. David say happy birthday. Thank you, David. Anthony too. Thank you, Anthony. Uh Gabe, I have a two thousand three Ford Mustang with the Mac wow. audio tweeters pods. Yeah. Yeah. I need good recommendation for a full range driver that fits in that spot. What is that? The um power acoustic? I know, right? I'm just saying. Uh okay. So that is a small driver. They're okay. Power Acoustic makes that little two inch factory replacement speaker, which is actually not that bad and they're real reasonable. A lot of the times what we're doing is we're putting a better tweeter in there, something like a big silk soft dome, like an Alpine R-Type, or a uh, Rockford like Power Series tweeter, um, if you're upgrading the stereo. If you're keeping the factory stereo, you just need to replace it because it's dry rotted and it sounds like crap. That's when we put in the... Um, did I say power acoustic? Mm -hmm. I meant power base. I'm sorry. Yes. Power base. Ugh. Power. I'm sorry. Uh, that's when we put the power base version of the speaker in. If you can't find us, let them know. I'll give you the model number. Um, but that's what we use a lot of times when we're just doing a factory replacement because those die, we'll use the power base. If we're doing an upgrade, there again, we'll put a really nice tweeter up there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to go crazy, you have a lot of the two inch speakers now from like Hertz and Focal and Audio Frog and every one of those other cool foreign speakers that, um, or European speakers I should say, um, that are 250 to $300, those would work too. You just might have to do a little modification because they're two and a half, not two inch. All right, so let's see. Chris, Chris say, cool, do you like the radio mic in the old factory spot? Not comparable. Yeah, I mean, we do that in the Corvettes. Um, we do it in the Jeeps. We do it in some of the Tahoes. Um, Camar it's funny. Camaros are real funny. Even though they came out in 2009, 2010, now that, like, like we didn't do a lot of them. And now that the, the new kit is out, we're, we're doing a bunch of them. So we're kind of playing with that as far as that microphone location to see what works best. We usually like to, to do a couple and and just see how it goes before we like that's where we're going yeah you know because we, we don't want to put it there and then they suck and we're not going to do everyone that way so a lot of times we just kind of experiment with what works best by how many people complain about it um and right now that location seems to be working fine yeah some people i know the guys in the forums are all like oh well, if you have the center channel pull out the center channel Put the microphone, put the GPS antenna, put the door chime all up where that factory speaker is. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I don't know how you're going to get that mic. That seems like a really bad location for the microphone. So we're, we're not doing that. All right, so Cole says, so switch the envelope and the bullet tweeters. What should I use? A ohm. A ohm. Well, I don't switch them. Just most bullet tweeters come as A ohm. It's very hard to, to find a forum tweeter, but if you have the option, Go for the 8 ohm tweeter as opposed to the 4 ohm tweeter. That that was really what I was getting at there. All right, Adrian, say I have a 2015 Passat with the Pioneer ABH model. Where is the best place to install the microphone? So there, there again, when it comes to the microphone, 90% of the time we're putting the microphone right up by the mirror. 
So it, it's just right there. You drop down the visor to make sure the visor isn't getting in the way. And, that, and so the microphone, so if the visor is here, the microphone is here, the mirror is here. That, that is typically our location and you know aimed right at the driver. We do 90% of our installs in that location for one. It, it kind of hides it uh, and we get great, we have no problems. So that's where we like to put it. Okay, so Ernie, Ernie say replacing my head unit, ab and speakers in 2002 Monsoon Soon Camaro. I need to retain the steering wheel controls. However, I can get my audio from the new head unit uh, while I still need the pack audio controller. For the That's steering wheel controls? Yeah. Yeah, the, the pack audio is, you got a lot of things going on there. So the steering wheel control interface. Okay, anytime you're, 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 you buy a car and you have a radio, if it doesn't need a smart harness, even though these radios are capable of interfacing with a steering wheel control, it's a generic interface. It's just a port. So you need something that converts the factory language over to something that you can, the pioneer can understand. So when you buy like a pack SWIRC, you tell it you're hooking it up to a Pioneer, which is seven, and then you plug it into the, the aux port, or it looks like an aux port, into the 3.5 or eighth inch jack in the back, and then you program it to volume up, volume down, track up, track down, play mute, pause. That's that one piece. That's all that's designed to do. Now, if you're putting amplifiers and speakers and all that stuff, it has nothing to do with the steering wheel controls. So, two totally different animals, if that answers your question. Okay. Uh, Aki, say thanks, guy. I appreciate it. All the videos. Learn a lot. Keep it up. I gotta go. <laughs> well, you're going to miss our thank you, but thank you. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thanks for the videos, Wesley. Thank you, Wesley. Have a great night. You have to go. Have to go to work, Cordy. Oh. Everybody's have to go up. Well, it's you know it's, it's, it's work time. <laughs> okay, so Frank, what is your opinion on the Alpine Type S subwoofers? Type S or Type R? Type S. I'm not a fan. I gotta be honest with you. I've never been a fan of the Type S. Pretty much anything. Uh, that's just my opinion. I don't like the way the speakers sound. I'm not thrilled with the subwoofers. In, in my opinion, if you're gonna buy anything Alpine, if you're not gonna go Type R. Look at somebody else's product. Their Type R stuff is so much better than their Type S product. It's almost insulting to have Type S product. I don't know why Alpine feels the need to have the Type, have S. The type S. It's like they sit here and they, they come out with a $2,500 radio. It's like, ah! and, and every other product they make is just priced very high. Some of it deservedly so. But then they come out with this Type S speaker trying to hit a price point that doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, I don't get it. If you want Alpine speakers, and I'm a fan of Alpine speakers, they just have to say R on them. Uh, either spend the money for the R's, and there again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just saying, if, if you want Alpine speakers, buy the R-Type version or don't buy them at all. All right, so Matthew. Matthew say compact subs for the truck, best brand. Shallow. Okay, so shallow mount subwoofers have always been a, a sucky topic in general just because they're shallow mount woofers and they don't do what everyone wants. Uh, we have two that we have pretty decent luck with. One is the Phoenix Gold shallow mount driver. Uh, sounds really nice. The second one, which has been we've done a lot of lately and it is, it's impressive is the kicker comp is it the RT kicker comp RT right Kicking comp okay RT. kicker makes two shallow mounts they make the CVT and the they make comp the comp R RT which is the new version has been awesome yeah uh, you put R about yeah. what are we running 600 watts to two of them six six to six to six to eight hundred watts to them yeah and, and crappy truck boxes, and they've been impressive. I, I'm, I, you know, and it's like when we get to do them, we're like, yes, at least we're gonna have happy customer. Um, but yeah, check out those two, see which one falls in your price range, and pick one up. All right. So Jeff, Jeff say in a 2011 Chevy Traverse in a Kenwood DMX 7704, 
will be too much to put tweeters and mids in the rear doors along with the front I have a 10 sub also okay so the okay anytime you're using deck power deck power is really made for four speakers and that's usually four coaxials you can get away with inexpensive separates like you buy an inexpensive separate it just has a tweeter and mid-range and like just a cap for the tweeter those work okay off of deck power mm -hmm. but anytime you're trying to power anything more than the four simple speakers the 18 watts by four built into the radio sucks for that um that's why and there again you don't have to go crazy and buy like a big four channel amp Pioneer makes the GMD 1004 and Alpine makes the KTP 445U which are the nice little brick amps that give you a true 45 or 50 watts by 4 simple to install could put them behind the dash that's what I'd recommend if you're looking to not go crazy but just have real power to your speakers otherwise buy a 4 channel amp uh, alright um Saludos para Tilapia. ¿Qué tranza, carnalito? ¿Cómo estás, güey? Uh, Ubaldo. Anyway. Yeah. Gabe. Gabe say Rockford Punch Pro or Hertz SPL. Ooh. Should well, the mids... Okay. Should the mids Hertz cost double? Should the mids Hertz cost double? Mm -hmm. I got to be honest with you. The reason why we didn't bring them in, even though, like we said, we, we don't sell a lot of them, I like... I, I hate louds. I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this with this. Fernando? Yeah. Not a fan of louds, but the Rockford loudspeakers actually sound good, uh, especially the mid-range. Tweeters are tweeters, but the mid-range sound amazing. I mean, they actually have some mid-range. They're not just six-inch tweeters. So, I haven't heard the the uh, Hertz SPLs. I know a lot of people use them, um, but. I like the Rockfords. I gotta be honest with you. It's it's a really nice sounding mid range for for a loudspeaker. All right. So uh, David says sorry I was late today watching YouTube water his sub box with a quickly water bottle. Salmon. I'm thinking. So. Oh I'm yeah, thinking so. yeah, yeah. Water. Is so oh yeah, that yeah? was funny. Yeah. Because he, he was curfing the box. So with the water bottle. He, well, he had to wet the the wood to to curf it, and of course. Then he picks on the guy that, that says, Oh my God, you got MDF wet. <laughs> Chris, say happy late birthday. Thank you. Um, Gabe, say going to install a relay to boost my remote signal. Yes. To power a few amps. Should I put the relay behind the head unit or in the back close to them? Hmm, that's a good question. Honestly, it'll work either way. Uh... You know, it's funny. I, I, I yeah, I, I, I don't think it really matters. Um, I like to put them behind the radio, mainly because I just don't like looking at the relay. That's yeah. really what it comes down to. I don't like seeing the big box relay. Uh, some people like to have like fuse holders and caps and wires and this and that and all this stuff laid out on the box. Some people like that. It, they, it, that's cool. And they'd put their relays. I've had guys that have had like three or four relays on there, and it's that's fine. Um, me personally. I don't like to see the relay, so I always put it behind the radio. That's that's that. But it'll work in either place. All right. So um, let's see. Totally. Go with the Alpine flagship F1 series. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> don't make that anymore. <laughs> so Cole say it's a Lancer, updrive, good bullet tweeter. Lancer. Lancer. Yeah. yeah. What are we talking? Is that the guy talking about the tweeters? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, those will be loud. Also, Matthew say, awesome. Uh, I would bring my truck to you when it's time. We'll be here. I know, right? Unless I'm on vacation. Uh, Robert, Crosby Roberts say, I'm about to put the system on my 2005 Ram 2500. Okay. My positive battery terminal is badly corroded. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Should I replace it when it should replace with? Uh, you know, it's funny you should mention that. I mean, we put that in the video, yeah. not this week, but last week. Last we had week. a. I don't know what it is about Rams, and I've owned four Dodge Rams? Three Dodge Rams. I've owned three Dodge Rams, and it happened on all of them. For some reason, that positive battery terminal just corrodes big time. Uh, it's like a science project. Uh, you don't need anything special. I mean, just 
cut it off, put some ring terminals on them, and put a new uh, you know, new battery terminal on it. Um, yeah, typically what I like to do is I like to get the battery terminals that have the, the two bolts with the, the thing in the middle, and uh, I grind the tops of them where the two bolts are so that you can you expose, and then I put ring terminals and screw them to those bolts. I don't try to put the wire up underneath that clamp and put the bolt down. Uh, that seems to work really well. It moves, it gives you that little extra two inches of room that you usually need, or an inch of room you need because you're cutting the wire short. Yeah. Um, but that's what I pick up. Just go to Discount Auto Parts, pick up that red positive battery terminal. You do, like I said though, make sure you scrape the paint off of where the bolts are, put your ring terminals on, screw them down. Found that out the hard way. Apparently that paint is like some serious power blocking paint. Remember that, that yeah. Honda? Oh mm -hmm. Jesus, that was funny. Yeah. I want to so, start! <laughs> What's the thoughts on the power compact sub all in ones? The power compact sub all in ones? Yeah. Which ones? I don't know. Oh, you mean like. Probably like, like the. Like that thing we put like in the, the avalanche? Under, yeah, under seats. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Everyone makes one? No. Hell no. 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 <laughs> no. So, no. box. No. <laughs> it's. Two inches, three inches tall, about yay big, has a sub in the top, a plug in the end. No. No, okay. All kidding aside. I've actually done one in a, put it, remember the guy we put underneath the seat of the, the Chrysler? Yes, yes. That he was two. a traveling salesman? Not the two, just the one. Oh. This, was, this was like two years ago. He had, the, put a, had us put the kicker one up underneath his seat in the Chrysler and, uh, absolutely loved it mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. like dude That's this is what I, I want because his factory sub was in the back corner it had bass he just wanted more butt vibration like whatever dude worked great um but no i'm not a fan never heard one that didn't suck even pioneer put theirs in their car their new one dual sub action blah 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 and by the end of ces all four of them were blown <laughs> so matthew is like that's what i spake that thought Okay. Yeah. Um, where's it at? Right behind you. That. Grab that. This? Yep. Ah. Okay. This is the Pioneer Shalomout 8 inch woofer. As you can see, it's very tiny. It's an 8 inch. This is the smallest woofer I would ever do in a car. That's it. You can put it back. And if you need a small amplifier to power it, Rockford makes these little guys right here, the PBR amplifiers, and yeah. make a 300 by one. You can run a simple 10 gauge to it and rock on. And Jason is correct. No, 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 <laughs> no. That was my Okay, so Tracy Jeff, it's like, I really was asking, do you think Soundways will be overkill on the tweeters in the rear door also? Yeah, okay, if that was the question, re yes. Okay. All right, so it depends what kind of system you're buying. I'm not a fan of putting a tweeter in the rear door. Coaxial fine if it's way down in the bottom, but a tweeter, like, like for example, like a Volkswagen Jetta mm -hmm. uh, and some of the Lexuses, they have tweeters. So if I'm in the back seat, they have a tweeter right here by the handle and mid-range down here. The problem is that tweeter's right here. Here's the driver's head. So now I'm the driver in the car. We've just jumped into the front seat, magic. And that tweeter's, like, right here. All I'm going to hear is that ta 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 so if you're trying to, if you just want loud, go for it. If you're trying to do something that actually has a sound stage, no, don't do it. That's it. So there again, if you want just loud, want to get make it loud, windows down, blaring, yeah, do it. Otherwise, no. Okay, sorry. All right, so Frank, say One more thing on that, don't, okay. So if you're going to have, okay. If you're doing loud tweeters, you're going to have two in the front, two in the back and they're the big loud tweeters. Wire them up in series, meaning come into one tweeter's positive, out of that tweeter's negative, all the way up into the front tweeter's positive, negative, back to the amplifier. You'll never blow them. Okay, go ahead. All right, so Frank say, I have a Pioneer ABH model. When I put the car on reverse, my screen doesn't change to the backup camera. Right. I look through the whole entire system, what should I check first? So on any camera, any radio with a camera input, it's gonna have a trigger wire. In the case of an ABH radio, it's a purple white wire in the harness. That purple white wire needs to hook up to the, whatever is triggering the rear light. So a lot of the times you can just go right to the rear light bulb, 
hook up to that, it's a positive, that'll trigger it. If you've done that, the other thing too is you have to go into the menu of the radio, go to the camera settings, turn them on, because it doesn't auto turn on. So there's two things that do that. Now, if you've attached to the rear light and you have the camera on in the settings and you're still doing like this, and it, at that point you need to take a digital multimeter and even though let's say if you're using a test light, turns on the test light, you want to take a meter to it because chances are good when you're putting it in in reverse you're losing voltage a lot of cars the a lot of the newer cars the uh, voltage drops substantially because it's putting out very little amperage to turn on that bulb it doesn't need it or they're putting out the bare ass minimum to turn on that bulb and when you hook up anything else it's not enough to trigger it. In that case, you need to use a relay because it's enough to trigger a relay. Fortunately, relays don't need much. They only need like a half amp and it'll trigger a relay. You need a relay to up the amperage to turn on the radio. So those are three things. Okay. All right. So um, put the tool that you use to punch the zero gauge cable. Say what? Amazon. Put the tool that yes. you use to punch the zero gauge cable. Punch it? Yes, the punch. Well, oh, like, oh, the cri oh, yeah. yeah. On Amazon. Gotcha. I'll add it to the tool list. Cool. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Good that call. That was Jane Carter. Yeah, we're working on that tool list, uh, you know, that, that's in the videos now that, that we're starting to put in there. I'm working on that to, to try to make a more comprehensive list to help you guys out. Um, yes, good call. Thank you. I'll add that to the list. All right. So, Gabe, can you guys make a video on how to probably run your speaker wired to the doors. Okay, so the reason why we haven't done that one um, is it can be a real pain in the butt. Uh, there's, there's, there's a couple problems with cars nowadays. Some cars, like I have, like in my Camaro, there's literally no extra room to get a wire into the car through the boot because it plugs in and all the connections are taken up. Some cars that have regular boots, you can just snake a wire through. Some cars that have boots, you have to drill a hole through. The problem with that drilling the hole through the harness is you're drilling a hole through the harness. That's not anything I want to recommend to anybody because I don't want somebody to grab their harness, drill a hole through it because I told them to, and then they totally screw up their car. The, the method that we've been using is we try to find, like the Hyundai video we did earlier mm -hmm. this year, uh, Velocitor. With, yeah, we had to add two extra wires into the passenger rear door. Yeah. And so what we did is we actually found the pins and plugged them into the factory harness because there was extra holes. We found the pins, we plugged them in, and that's how we did that car. Um, more and more cars were trying to do that on. It's just... The pins. You know, and then... It, it, it's a question of how do we do it to where it makes sense and not have you destroy your car. Because if I recommend something and you damage your car, I'm going to feel really bad about that. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't want to do that to people. I don't want to be like, yeah, look at me go. Yeah, drill a hole right through it. It's easy. It's not. It sucks. And yeah. if you screw up, you just ruined the door. Dude, that's expensive. It's going to be water inside. Yeah, but I mean, if you're just trying to, if, if there's a boot that you can get through, Buy an air conditioner zip tie from Home Depot for five bucks and snake it through with that. All right, so Donald say, um, oh no, wait. Anthony say, I always go to the concert and turn back to the stage and say, sounds great. Well, yeah, anytime anyway. you go to the concert, you're always walking out like this. Yo, what's up, man? What's up? No. Yeah, that, that was always my, when, back in the 80s uh, and, and 90s, that was always the thing when the guys would show up with the box Chevys. They have the three and a halfs or four by sixes in the dash and the six by nines in the rear. And they were like, man, that's the best. And you're like, uh, okay, do you walk into the concert backwards? No. Well, let's put some front stage in your car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Donald. Donald Lou say, what are your thoughts on the Rock 4 P3 subwoofers? Love the P3s. They have a great bass, deep, they have a great deep bass response, a nice amount of power handling. Uh, it's, we don't get many of them back. Actually, we get very few of them back. If yeah, you know, we get a handful maybe a year out of the hundreds that we Ooh. sell. So, yeah. oh, you don't mean to keeping you awake? Yeah. Keeping you awake there? Yeah. Um, 
I'm the one that slept through the alarm this morning. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony, some pioneers also have a pottery sitting. Also. Yeah. Also. Yeah, huh. for the subwoofer, it's a hundred. They have a hundred eighty degree uh, out of phase thing, polarity switch. So, anyways, yes, P 3s awesome. Yeah. All right. So, what can I use to distribute remote signal? To distrib dis distribute. Oh. Um, uh, really? Uh, the relay. Yeah. Well, oh, I, I mean. So it's 18 gauge wire that you're using most of the time for remote turn on. So if you group it all together and put it in a connector that you're going to slide onto the relay, that should be fine. Uh, if you're not going to use a connector, solder them all onto the relay, that's fine. Uh, if you want to go overboard, you can go to Amazon and pick up those cool little screw terminals where you have a screw, 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 and you can put one in and then make loops around and then have it go off to that. Um, so those those are really your options. Ah, okay. So Dante Dante say, hey guys, uh, it's best to change the speaker wires in 2009 Honda Civic. The speakers are rated at 140 watts, and it will be using a four-channel Pioneer. Should I rewire the doors or go to the factory harness? How big is the amplifier? What's he using for an amplifier? Uh, a Pioneer, I'm guessing like 8604. If you're just using a Pioneer yeah, 8604, the factory wire should be adequate. So in, in a Honda, what it is, is you, okay, so if you want to in a Honda run new wire, uh, you, you can't go through the sleeve because the sleeve is like a half inch and it's tighter on the wire. You can poke out of the sleeve or poke out zip tie to the sleeve and then poke back in mm -hmm. you just have to make sure you silicone those holes another thing you can do in a Honda is because you got to remember it's only like you can attach the wire in the kick panels so you can grab the factory wires in the kick panels so if you want to run a bigger wire from the amp to the kick panels the little two foot run through the door is not going to affect it in any way so if you want to go from the back uh, 12 gauge into the kicks and then out to the that's fine you can do yeah. that too there's no reason why you can't do that I mean if it's easy to you to run the whole thing why not but yeah a lot of times in those civics you just you, you pull the grommet out you cut the grommet you come through the grommet and then you come back into the grommet and then you zip tie that that wire to to that and that's and then of course silicone back up the holes yeah so you don't get water in the car in the door that's what you can do in that car yeah um, so Frank say thanks for the help guys gotta go to Washington DC see you guys in YouTube say hi to Trump not really <laughs> alright go ahead alright so any update on the K40 radar and Kenwood Maestro integration you know they talked about that at the training and I honestly didn't pay attention I know what you're thinking how is that possible I they, they said oh any time now so, <gasps> you no, the top? I got nothing. So yeah, soon. Huh. Uh, Go with that. All right. So my say hi guys from Little Rock, Arizona. Yep. Yep. How much wattage do the passive crossover consume? Reason why I ask is due to the active. Yep. Yep. Crossover crease and everyone it's saying it's too much better. Okay, so funny you should ask that. This is a great question. And I, I would really I'm I'm trying to figure out a way to where we can actually meter this and show what the real difference is. At the end of the day, I don't know if it's so much the power consumption that everyone is losing their minds about, or if it's the ability to actually fine-tune the crossovers to your uh, liking. Um, when we start, okay, history lesson. When I started back in the 90s, that's all there were were raw drivers. And all we used was electronic crossovers. Passive crossovers, though they existed, weren't anything we used that much of. Coaxials were, were kind of available, that was it. But like tweeters, mid range, I ran a four way active system from Orion. And how I did that was uh, you take the two-way passive or two-way 
electronic crossover, you plug it into the three-way electronic crossover, and then you'd have tweeter, mid, mid, sub. Because um, we had a tweeter, we had a mid-range, we had a mid-bass, and we had a subwoofer. So that was a four-way active system. And you'd have to sit there and turn all these dials and do it by ear. It was a real fun thing, but that was the thing we did, and we never thought anything about it. We also had an amp for each. So my car, I had six amplifiers. I had uh, three Orion 222s, a 250, 2150. I had four 222s. Because I also had tweeters and other tweeters and dash. Anyway, the point is that was just how we did it. And then speaker manufacturers started to put crossovers in there, and it was like, oh, thank God. You know, and this was also the time when they started making more and more four channel amplifiers. Because up until then, four channel amplifier was like, no, we don't have four channel amplifiers. What are those? Oh, let's just take two two channel amplifiers, <laughs> put them in one heat sink. They're this big. You got a four channel amp. Rock on. And the Japanese manufacturers slowly but surely allowed us to sell four channel amplifiers. They kind of pushed us into that thing. Wow. Like JBL, Alpine, um, Acoustic, uh, which I think was an American company, uh, Yamaha. Um, JBL? No. Yeah, JBL. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, oh, well, there they go. Somebody having a really bad day. So, fast forward to now. Every, it's like spandex pants. I think it's like spandex pants. There was a time where spandex pants, yeah. no one wore them. But then back then, everyone had spandex, and then it was like, spandex suck, and then no one wore spandex. Now we call them yoga pants. They're spandex pants. That's all they are. Thank God they came back. I'm not complaining. But I think that's where it's all going with this. I think it's all coming back to that. Now, when I was on the phone, we, we had a guy that wanted to do network mode not too long ago, and mm -hmm. he was adamant about it. He was so bummed that the 4200 didn't do it. He ended up buying a 5800 so we could have network mode. Um, he wanted to do, uh, I won't say the speaker brand because I don't want to, I don't want to, anyways, yeah. he, he was like buying these really, okay, sorry, making a long story long. <laughs> so I called them up and I'm like, hey, listen, this is what this guy wants to do. I'm really worried about these tweeters. Um, what should I do? And the guy's like, well, use the passive crossovers that come with it. And I was like, he doesn't want to do that. He wants to go network. And I audibly heard him go, <sighs> okay, so here's what you need to do. So... I, everyone's on board, but they also realize, Jesus, you know, we spent all this time designing these passive crossover networks that do such amazing things for these speakers, and no one wants to use them all of a sudden because a couple guys are going, oh, yeah, you need to do, you know. I'm not saying it's better or worse is what I'm basically getting at. Yeah. I don't think you're losing all that much power. I think you're gaining adjustability with the ability to fine-tune the more you like. That's it. And there again, it's a scary thing because if you're buying a $1,200 set of speakers and you're going all active, you blow that tweeter, man. That's yeah. a $300 tweeter you just capped because you thought some dude said, hey, this is great. That's not saying you're not going to blow it on the passive crossover. It's just the risk is down. I think it's an education thing. I think you, you have to know what you're doing and not necessarily do it because everyone's saying to do it. Christian, I don't know if that Christian. helped. Christian, remember Christian? Yeah, yeah, he, he yeah, knows yeah. me all the time. Yeah, oh, yeah that's with cool. With pictures of the, uh, the awesome. Audi and the Phoenix Gold system. He put his 8800, took out the factory radio and put the 8800 in the glove box. He uses the ARC app to control the radio. That's pretty, that's pretty so, cool. So, yeah, that's pretty that's sweet. Awesome. Was, I'm on the fence. What's Jason saying? I'm, I'm on the fence for spandex. Depends who's wearing them. Wearing them. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, come on. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. But still, it's, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take know. Dave Chappelle's uh, thought on this. Hey, it's still titties. Uh, sure. <laughs> you want titties, titties? <laughs> yeah, they're still titties. Um, okay, what, what was that? Uh, uh, I missed that one. What? Protect the tweeters. Yes, protect the tweeters. Cap the tweeters. Yeah. Even, and there again, if you're going to do active, this gentleman strongly recommended still capping the tweeters at at least a minimum amount of blockage so that you don't blow them. You can still get active on them, but he was like, J just put this cap on there, please. Yeah. You don't. Drew, you're a little late. That's all I got to say. We're wrapping up the I show. What time is it? I'll see you guys on 615 amps. Okay. Uh, yoga pants are a privilege, not a right. Eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, everyone, be free. Be confident. Who cares? Yeah.
But yes, it is a privilege, not a right. All right. Did we get everybody? 7.30, yes, sir. All right, guys, we're going to call this one a night. Thank you all for chiming, saying questions. Thank you. Is this thing, thing on? Is this thing on? No, this thing is off, baby. We're gone. We're out of here. <laughs> um, you guys have a great night. Yep. Was, was, was Tony here? Uh, what? Uh, Jason said, was Tony here? Do you guys know? Tony, Tony, Tony uh, was here. Thanks for a great show. Uh, yes, Tony from the UK was here tonight. Definitely. Uh, he uh, I think he here. took off. He might be gone already. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys. Thanks, to everybody. Bye, thanks. Christian. We'll see you guys see you. tomorrow. Otherwise, we'll see, see you soon. next Monday. Or what's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday. Every week, you can see us. See you every day. Hey, it's like Christmas never ends. Yeah.